He's going to go do some work for Fletcher Mackinac, LEDSU Television, watch the pregame show, enjoy it. Fletcher's a slave driver. He's got him working hard. Thank you, Coach. We appreciate you being here. Our next speaker is in his second season as the head coach at John Aaron High School after serving as an assistant coach for the Patriots since 2000. He's a former star quarterback for the Patriots, graduating in 1994. John Aaron 3-1 after beating Salomon 21-7 this past Friday night. And the Patriots traveled to Santa Mall this Friday night. Please give a warm quarterback club welcome to Coach Corey Lambert of John Aaron High School. Court. I'd like to thank the um, Portman Club for having me, and also Kim Trahan. Um, I'm going to be very brief. Um, it's the first time for me. I'm very ecstatic about being here tonight, today. Um, I'd like to talk about John Eric High School. Um, first of all, I was a player there in uh, 1992, 93, and 94. We went to the semis in 92. Um, one thing I'm trying to instill back at, the, at, the, at John Eric's when I was a little boy is the Eric pride we have and the tradition that we have at that place. You know, we got some guys that play in the NFL right now. Uh, Reggie Wayne was a freshman on the team when I played, I was a quarterback. Um, Drake Nevis, he is with Dallas now. And um, we have Lyming Bauer at LSU and those places like that. We had a lot of guys that were successful at that place. I coached them in 2007. I've been a coach at Eric since, not 2000, since 99. I've been a coach at Eric, been the offensive coordinator, assistant head coach there under my former head coach was Billy North. Um, one thing that we had last year, we had a lot of guys, um, we, we've been kind of down for the past six or seven years. Well, this, this group we have right now is a big senior class, there's 26 of those guys. But we got a lot of young good guys and sophomores right now, that's going to be a real good class for us. There's 24 of those guys. So we're trying to teach these guys how to get over that hump and get that Eric Pride back. And basically have those guys used to playing as brothers and um, brotherhood. And that's what we're trying to teach and instill in those guys. Because as you all know, you watch the news and you see what's going on in Marrero where those guys live at. Well, what we're trying to do is um, we're trying to put these, um, put these guns out their hands and, get, and, and make sure that, you know what, hey guys, you can, you can still do these things and do what's right. And um, the stealing the drugs and the things like that. I got over 65 guys on my team. And a lot of their friends, you know, uh, um, are supporting those guys now. A lot of things, that, uh, the morale at our school is much better because of their success. I got 50 guys in my freshman program this year. That's the biggest we've had in a long time. And um, a lot of our guys on the team right now has over 2.6 GPA. And those kids, you know, those kids can make it. You know, so I mean, that's what we instill in first. The academics, the behavior, the talent has always been at John Eric. Um, we're just trying to um, mold these guys into, be, and, into becoming incredible, capable citizens right now in society and all the other stuff will carry over. Now I'm talking football with us right now. We have one, um, one of the top running backs in the state. You know, you have the Leonard Fournette kid at St. Olaf. We have Darrell Williams, who, um, who I believe is um, one of the best running backs I've had at John Air, one of the best running backs Eric have had. You know, he's on the road right now. They're running for almost um, 1,000 yards in, in five games. He needs 230 more yards, and he'll have 1,000 yards. He has, uh, right now, he's at 760-something right now and 10 touchdowns. You know, he's about six, he's six one, about 215. Uh, he's committed to Arizona State right now um, and, <clears throat> and things right now, but um, he's still being recruited and things like that by people, but um, he's gonna carry his team as far as we need to go. He's, um, he's a 3.0 student, he's uh, fully qualified, and he's, um, he's, a, he's a hell of a running back, and he's gonna carry us. He also spots sometimes on defense. Defensively, we um, right now I think our offense is uh, averaging 40 points a game, but defensively we're only, we're only giving up nine points a game, and that's carrying us right now. Defense and special teams. Defensively, we got two no go, two nose goals. We run a three-four defense also. Uh, one of them six-five, three-thirty, um, and Adrian Flag, and one of them is six-four, three-twenty down the Williams. And those guys are recruited by you know the two lanes and the places like um, two lane Mississippi State, those schools and things like that right now. Um, Two of those guys are waiting on the ACT, but we got about six more guys on the defense that's real good. Our DBs and, um, and our outside linebackers are real good. So in the 3-4, you know, for you guys that know about sports, 3-4 is a lot of speed, and we use the big nose guards to stop the run. So um, they've been helping us a lot and getting us a good full field position on offense so we can do well. And um, other than that, I mean, that's about all I have today. I mean, we're just, we're just trying to bring John Eric back where it needs to be. Um, and um, 
that Eric Pride that we had when we played in the 90s and when I was a little boy in the 80s watching John Eric play. So that's about what I have today. Yeah, any questions? Uh, my question is, during the 80s and the 90s, it seemed like the West Bank schools dominated the prep scene. Yeah. And now, except for Carr, except for Carr, is a, you know, the teams are not making the playoffs, they're not going deep into the playoffs, although there's still a lot of talent there in the West Bank that's being recruited. Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, you know, I'm homegrown from that area. Uh, we didn't leave, and we didn't leave and go out to the LJs and things. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. There's a lot of kids that doesn't live in those areas going to those schools. And by those schools being citywide schools, by those schools being citywide schools, they can get any kid in the city and, um, and able to play. You know, well, we have to make sure the kid lives in our district. And by Helen Cox becoming a high school now, it used to be a middle school. So now it's taking, it's depleting Eric and West Jeff that's right next door to each other, where it used to feed both of those schools where you lived at. So, and you got Higgins right down the street, but you have Warren Eastern, Carr, and those schools, they're citywide schools, so they can get any kid in the city. You know, so that hurts a little bit. That, that was going to be my question, that <coughs> citywide schools, so there are no districts, there are no boundaries, so therefore <coughs> it's, it's, it's a private school, get anywhere from anybody, but it doesn't, but it's free to go to. Okay, basically your citywide schools, like the um, Carr, Warren Eastern, Oak Perry Walker, Landon schools, are the charters, uh, some of those, those, those are citywide charter schools. So if a kid lives anywhere in the city, those kids can go to that school. Yeah, you know, they can go to that school and you know, we even got some kids that's from Marrero that goes to those schools. Like, I'm, you know, I'm going to show some of those guys probably use addresses and go to those schools also. But you know, I'm a firm believer of this and I, and I think it's going to turn around for us over at John Eric. I can't speak for the other coaches. You got to win, win games. And if we, we stop winning, we're going to start getting those kids back. And we can't, you know, we can't pull them out and say, well, this is going on. Well, you got to make your place a better place. And you got to do those things. And that's what we're doing at John Eric. So, yeah. Coach, what about the select versus non select issue that's been the hotbed of prep sports since last January? I'm, I'm going to just be honest with you. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. When, when I played football, it didn't matter who we played. We beat the Brother Mons, we played the Brother Mons, we lost to some of them. We, we beat the St. Mons, we lost to some of them. You know, we, we were just taught to play, play ball and do what we need to do, and that's what we're instilling now. Um, I'm not a big fan of it, it can go either way. You know, um, we're just going to prepare our kids to play against whoever they play. And um, the recruiting thing, I don't think it's, um, you know, I'm not too worried about that either. Uh, like I said, you, you make your place a better place uh, academically, um, socially, the culture, the morale, your football, I think, you know, make it conducive for learning. I, I really think that um, Eric's going to come back to being what it is. I can't speak for everybody else, but I can only speak for what we had at John Eric. You know, I'm also an administrator at Eric. I'm also, I'm a dean of students, and I'm also the head coach. So I see it from both sides, but I just, you know, I, we want, we're going to make that place that everybody needs to be so we can be competitive and kids are going to want to come to Eric like they used to. So it don't matter what the citywide school is doing, select, non-select, what's going on, we're just going to make that place a better place.